What is up? I am TJ, this is Uncommon, and so are you. Welcome to the session of March Dadness. Get ready, Jack, because apparently we're the only game in town. Welcome to the session. I am your humble host, TJ. It is Thursday about 2 o'clock on March 12th, and the world has gone bonkers with the coronavirus. We're going to be auctioning off this bottle of Perel for a starting price of $16 million dollars and a roll of two-ply toilet paper for a beachfront condo or maybe a Ferrari. So we'll see how that auction goes. Just kidding. I hope you are not being impacted by this crazy thing that has swept the globe, but when all else fails, who's online taking care of business? Uncommon. All right. So... This week, we're talking about March Dadness, even though there is no NBA, there are no fans at March Madness games, no one's working, we can't get together more than two or three people at a time. We're focusing on some competition around dads. So before we jump into that, I want to do a little housekeeping. Uh, if you're new to the session, uh, each week we do uh, either a husband, dad, leader episode with maybe a miscellaneous on the extra weeks of a month. Uh, one way to help out this nonprofit is uh, our membership package. It is $25 a year, and we just launched a couple of new things that I think you'll be uh, would be benefiting from. One is a permanent 10% discount to our, any of our digital products as well as wristbands. This is what they call double trouble. It is black and red. It's only available to members. Uh, another thing is we just dropped the latest uh, Uncommon Original and also uh, we just posted something online yeah, uh, today. Uh, we're voting for the next Uncommon t-shirt. Finally, something worthy of your vote. Something worth your vote. The next Uncommon t-shirt. Go to our Facebook page. You will see there are four different designs to choose from and a special edition for members only that is available that that will be put into uh, the store starting April 1st. It is our anniversary date coming up and so we wanted to launch with a new uncommon shirt. You just go there, you comment or at least you either like, love, wow, or thumbs up, that is one of your votes for a particular style of shirt. So that's how you can take part in that. And so we're making the announcement next Thursday what the next Uncommon Design shirt will be. Now, I know which one I'm partial to. I'm not gonna reveal that until next week, but being that I design these things, I can get whatever shirt that I want, so I know, one, I'm getting hands down whether it wins or not. Call it veto privileges. Okay, so this week we're talking about competition. And I asked my guys this week, the question was, what is your competitiveness level on a scale of 1 to 10? I apologize if you're hearing uh, some lawn services. Uh, our guy is outside hard at work around the studio and he's picked this time to help us out with the lawn. So I apologize for that. But our question was your competitiveness level one to 10, one meaning passive, 10 meaning you are downright annoying with your competitiveness. And apparently I hang out with a bunch of alpha males who want to be the most competitive person on the block. 
because when I ask all my guys, uh, only one of them chose a somewhat passive grade. I had one that was four. I had four that was a seven. I had three that was an eight. I had one that was a nine. And two, well, one was a 10. And then one asked if he could be a 10 plus. That's how that goes. Uh, I'm going to pause right here and give a shout out to James Metzger over at Christ Point Church. He is one of the guys I harass on a weekly basis with a question. And when I asked him this question, his response was, am I the first person to answer the question? Again, 10 plus was the highest grade. So uh, then I asked an online question to the whole Uncommon uh, social page. And what's funny is that when I asked my guys via text, they were like, you know, so competitive, right? Um, the online poll revealed 20 people voted passive and 22 first, uh, voted competitive. Now, they only had two to choose from. They didn't have a scale. But um, passive and competitive, that was pretty even right there. And there goes our lawn guy. Welcome to the show, lawn guy. Mr. Wayne, you're awesome. Thank you, brother. Um, so you can see that guys tend to gravitate toward being competitive with each other. Now, if you are looking at someone else, another guy, as your competition, you have chosen the wrong target. I'm here to tell you that is not your target. So let's move on to some the good and bad, right? So competitiveness keeps us sharp. You know, it keeps us focused. It's like capitalism. It's iron sharpens iron. That person uh, does a good job of cutting grass, like my guy out there. Uh, uh, but someone else needs to up their game to provides kind of the same services, if not better. That competitiveness, that competition is a good thing. Competitiveness due to pride and self-esteem, that's a bad thing. If you are what I call the four wisdom tooth guy, you never wanna be the two wisdom tooth guy around the four wisdom tooth guy because you won't get the story finished of you getting two wisdom teeth pulled before my man is jumping in, so I had four. I had four wisdom teeth. Actually, I had three installed so I could pull more than four. Self-esteem, pride, not a good thing. Competing with yourself to be more Christ-like, that's a great thing. Competing with others so that you can boast about it, that is a horrible thing. Competitiveness to grow as a person in general, that's a great thing. I want to be, we have a, a goal set at our, our, our creative agency. Uh, our goal is 1% better every week. That's our goal, to learn and grow at least 1% better every week. It's attainable. I mean, I sound like a lot, but it's attainable. And at the end of the year, our clients are benefiting from us targeting that growth. Now, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, in that not of yourselves, TJ. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because you and I both know, we know a guy, I can see him in my mind right now, you know a guy that if he could save himself, he would not stop talking to you about how he saved himself. He'd wake up telling people about that. He'd go to sleep yammering about that. So that same guy that I'm thinking of always used to pass out gospel tracts. And every time I would see him, once he started passing out the gospel tracts, he would tell me a number of tracts he passed out. And over time, that number grew and grew and grew. And he let me know exactly about that number. 
And then one day he ran into a missionary and he tried that tactic with the missionary. And he said, I've handed out over 50,000 gospel tracts. And the missionary was not going to fall for that. But my man just wanted to see what the competition was, where he stood. And he asked the missionary what he, he had been giving out gospel tracts. And he said, yes, I have. And he said, if you had to ballpark how many you've given out, how many would it be? He said, I stopped counting after my first million. There's always a bigger fish. Stop worrying about other people. It does not make you better or worse. Keep your eyes on Jesus and shut up about what you have accomplished. It's not about that. Uh, the good for your, your, that your competitiveness is, has on your children, right? It's not just about you. Right? This is about March dadness. This is the competitiveness of a dad and how he reflects on his children and family. Well, your competitiveness does have some good consequences for your kids. It inspires creativity. They see competition. Uh, they want to get better, so they get creative on how to get better. So-and-so is selling lemonade down the block at 25 cents. Maybe they sell lemonade and sweet tea. If you're a good Southerner, sweet tea is an option. Uh, it encourages, encourages cooperation. You may have to team up with someone to be better than something else or some other team. Uh, it develops emotional control. Your competitiveness, you see people, okay, I'm going to compete, compete, and then I'm just not going to act out on it once the result happens. You win the game, you lose the game, whatever it is, it develops emotional control. And it encourages growth. There's nothing wrong with encouraging growth. The negative your competitiveness has on your children, what fosters hostility and aggression, because they see maybe you getting angry when you lose or when you fail. They see you're aggressive toward other people who you think are doing better than you. Sound familiar? I think everybody has fallen for that trap of someone, uh, one of your friends, uh, buys a better house or better car or has a nice watch or whatever it is and all of a sudden you start putting the eyes on those things and start comparing what you have to that. Uh, it can even trigger unsafe situations like if you're doing things, uh, you lift 200 pounds on a bench press, your friend lifts 225. You've never tried to do 250 but because you're so much of a man, you're going to try 250 and have to cry out for help when that barbell drops on your chest to get out from under it. <laughs> you can see it makes you do unsafe things. It can inflate or deflate your ego, right? I mean, I've seen guys, man, they just puff up. They just have to be number one. Get that Ricky Bobby going. If you're not first, you're last. And then dealing with your disappointment. They see how you may pout, act like a child, act out, lash out at people because of your inability to process maybe being uh, beat by someone. What if that person's been training and training and training and doing that thing, but you haven't? You try it, you may fail, or that person succeed, and all of a sudden you start pouting like a giant child about that. Your kids see both the good and the bad with your competitiveness. <clears throat> so make sure you have channeled that, right? And you can ask yourself, what is your goal? Is your goal in life to be better than someone else you know? Is that really your goal? There's always going to be a bigger fish. There's always going to be someone probably making more money than you and you're probably making more money than someone else. Is it a self-esteem issue? Do you have to be better than someone else so it makes you feel better? Is it a pride issue? Is that you feel unfulfilled unless you are better than someone else? That is sin, bro. That is 100% sin. 
And we have not been called to that. Your goal and my goal is to be more like Christ. If you want to compete, be more like Christ than you were yesterday, TJ. That's your goal. And that's a righteous goal at that. That is what we have been commanded to do. So if we want to be competitive, get into the word more often. Be able to speak about your faith. Be able to speak with truth and grace with people or play with people, interact with people, and not have to be better than them. Nothing wrong with being good at what you do. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying is that if you're not better than everyone, you're a giant child, then that's a problem. Matthew 6, 1 through 4. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you give to the needy, do so, I'm sorry, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that by your giving may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. I know this person. Uh, this person used to, was very, very generous, always you know, gave to the community, always seemed to be given to the community, but always had to have something, um, let it be known, per se. I'm trying not to put anything in here that could be distinguishable. Um, and then other people around me always said, boy, that person is just so, so giving, so generous. And I said, do you think that person would be as generous if we did not make a big fuss about it? If we didn't put something in to the newspaper or wasn't creating something that said so-and-so gave this. And you could tell that everybody that was in that group, they just could not understand what I was talking about. They were like, Wait, what do you mean? She's so generous. I'm like, well, would that person be generous if no one knew about it? So, it's important to be um, focused on the right kind of target because we do things for our own ego, especially men. We tie our self-esteem and pride and libido to uh, all kinds of things. The car we drive, <clears throat> the amount of money that's in our bank, our shirts, our attire, go LSU, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everything in our world has some type of an effect on our our ego and our self-esteem. And so when it becomes unhealthy, we tend to fall, right? We tend to sin about that. And so I have a couple of articles. And what was funny is that I did not know I was writing about this. As always, I only get involved with this until like Monday or Tuesday. And so uh, the article this week that's happening is around competition. So I, I did not know that was being scheduled. Uh, so uh, what a, a divine appointment that was. So our first article here is called Men and Competition. And these are articles that are on our website. You can check them out. One is called Brothers in Envy. One is called Running the Race. And live a balanced life. I just chose four this week for you. In case you have not seen some of these, I've been choosing from some older pieces uh, from our archives because there's some really great content around that. And then uh, our, our devotion that I'm mentioning this week is um, Changes, uh, A Man for All Seasons. And that is found on Uversion. In case you have not taken that, that devotion, that is a great one. I'll put a description down in the copy here. So in case you wanted to see what that was about. And so I think it's important for us to uh, maybe turn 
the great competition into the call to do this. We're not in com competition with each other. We're trying to grow the kingdom. And so uh, let's readjust our focus uh, so that we can put our comp competitiveness in the right light. Oh boy, that lawnmower is back again. Whoa, sounds like a 200 pound mosquito. All right, so we're at the end of this. I wanted to just thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, if Uncommon has ever been a blessing to you in some way, we are looking for seven more ongoing monthly contributors. It could be $5 a month, it could be $50 a month, whatever is on your heart. Uh, that just helps us uh, pay the bills, keep all this going. I think if you look back in some of our videos, we did a miscellaneous one with where or all the money goes, as well as uh, how much content we develop. And so if you've now seen that video, I highly recommend you go get a, a view of that and see the scope of Uncommon, because a lot of work and effort and prayer goes into this ministry. Uh, be sure to sign up on our newsletter. We've added some brand new content to our drop-down navigation for Uncommon Marriage or a, uh, a monthly tune-up uh, that is free to be seen and experienced. Uh, you can follow us on, obviously, social media. We are always around Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube with a ton of videos there. We'd like you to comment, share, and like. Be sure to go to Facebook today and vote for the next Uncommon t-shirt design. Uh, you have one week to get that in. Uh, the announcement, the winner, will happen next Thursday. The one membership uh, shirt is already locked and loaded. That will be going up. But the other ones that are available to vote on, that's what we want your input on. So. I challenge you to go vote on that before next Thursday. So, at the end here, say it with me. Since you're going to be something, be uncommon.